see all your smiling faces up here. Um, it's great that uh, you know we all work together to pack this bus. It's fantastic. We're going to tell the CPUC a thing or two when we get up there. This movement is really growing. Um, this is a movement you know that basically started here in California, in Santa Cruz County, and in and in Marin, and in Sonoma County, and um, has since spread across the country uh, and around the world. We had 36 different protests uh, happen as part of the Action Day to stop smart meters on October 4th. So um, you know you guys are the leaders. You're the really ones who are committed to giving up, you know, the uh, a day during the holiday season, uh, uh, you know, at a very inconvenient time in the middle of the day. This is precisely why uh, the CPUC scheduled these hearings at such an I inconvenient time, because people are busy with the holidays, they're out of town, uh, and, and they didn't want a, ho a large public turnout. Well, that strategy seems to be backfiring, because people can <laughs> see right through it, and we've had uh, the meetings packed so far. So. Just to give you some background on where, where we're going, um, so this is the phase two of the Public Utilities Commission's um, opt-out proceeding. So um, the meeting today will be overseen by a judge, uh, administrative law judge, uh, Amy Yip Kikugawa, and uh, she is, she'll be overseeing the hearing. There was a, a, a CPUC business meeting this morning in San Francisco, so that means that the commissioners will not be present at this hearing. Um, it's likely that PG&E will send uh, some of their administrative executive staff to listen in, but they will likely not say anything. So what this particular proceeding is about is the opt-out, which was fought very hard for legally, politically, through direct action. We wouldn't have an analog uh, meter opt-out had a dozen families in Santa Cruz not taken direct action to remove their smart meters when they were making them, them sick. This was a year ago. Um, and if you remember, we've only had the analog opt-out officially for a year now. So it really is people taking direct action when, when, when they don't get recourse through the, the courts or through the regulatory agencies that makes uh, these kinds of things happen. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, Sandy Maurer of the EMF Safety Network, her lawsuit has been dismissed by the California Court of Appeals. Um, and, and this is what happens as we uh, go to the regulatory agencies, as we go to uh, the courts and realize that we really have no, uh, no opportunity for justice to be, uh, to, to be uh, achieved, uh, people will realize that we need to take action together to, to set this, uh, uh, this situation right. So the questions being posed by the judge today uh, at the hearing are, um, is there a cost to the analog meter opt-out program? If so, who should pay that cost? Should it be um, the individuals who want to opt out for whatever reason? Or should it be the should it be socialized? Should the cost be spread around all ratepayers who pay a PG&E bill, or should uh, or should the cost be paid for by the shareholders? We feel that uh, because the shareholders uh, and the executives uh, made a terrible mistake. That's one way of looking at it by not consulting uh, the public before they even uh, embarked on this multi-billion-dollar smart meter program. Uh, and since they subsequently made a mistake and uh, disposed of over nine million perfectly functional analog meters that they're now having to pay to replace and charging the opt-out customers with, we feel that the shareholders should pay for uh, that mistake. And uh, you might want to think about uh, what the smart meter program has cost you individually and who's paying for those costs and who should, who should be required to pay for those costs. There's a sheet that uh, we passed around earlier. I'll come by again and, and distribute copies of this. But um, there's a great uh, piece written by Nina Beattie of Monterey um, entitled, Whose Costs Are Costs? Because when you think about it, people who opt out and are not using the smart meter mesh network are still being charged the additional fee that pg e is adding to everyone's bill. Uh, for the smart meter even though they're not using it. So really if we're opting out we should get a refund and we shouldn't be talking about added fees. The only reason they're talking about added fees is uh, because this is a punitive program designed to uh, force smart meters on people who, can, who can't afford the, the so-called opt-out fee. Um, so you might want to gear your comments specifically. Uh, uh, you don't have to be uh, specific about the opt-out policy in particular. This is an opportunity to talk about the smart meter program and how it's so misguided and how uh, technology has really gone awry. Um, but if you want to uh, put it in terms of cost, 
uh, and, and, and those issues, I, that probably be more likely heard by the judge. I, I don't think it's a mistake that they purposefully destroyed 9 million analog meters. I think it's the same pattern that the corporations have done, you know, for years and years and uh, where there's a competing technology, uh, like, you know, General Motors uh, took, uh, uh, you know, the streetcars off the streets. We had a, a beautiful public oh, transport yeah. system, the best in the, the whole uh, civilized world in, in the U.S. and they took the streetcars and burned them because they were a uh, they were a, a threat to the bus and the automobile uh, profits that they were uh, that they were reaping. So I don't think it was a mistake, but um, it wasn't. An, it wasn't yeah. an accident. But it wasn't it is an a accident. mistake. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. It, it is exactly. Decision exactly. By an organized organization. With yeah. People. And what we're dealing with here when we're talking about PG&E and the other investor owned utilities is a criminal network, you know. They are, we, t we call it extortion, kind of like, oh yeah, it's like extortion. This is extortion and this is a criminal entity. And uh, the people who are really dealing with PG&E on a day-to-day -day basis, like the victims of San Bruno, are realizing that, that they are a criminal racket and they are being protected by uh, people like Michael Peavy, who really needs to be uh, tossed out of, of, uh, of, of his, his seat uh, and the president presidency of the CPUC. Uh, the Public Utilities Commission, uh, as an appointed body, not an elected body, serves the purpose of being a buffer between the population and the legislature. Because if the legislature was directly responsible for regulating these utilities, uh, a ton of, of electoral pressure would be put on those legislators and they would be forced to do something. So by having a body like the CPUC, which are appointed by the governor, uh, it provides a buffer against the resentments and the demands of the population. And this is the way it's worked for decades. Um, so people have been talking about circulating a proposition uh, uh, or a referendum to force the CPUC to uh, become elected positions that are elected by the people of California. I think this would require a, a change in the Constitution, but I mean, people are pretty pretty ready for that uh, that situation. Now, this is the last public hearing on a series of five that have happened throughout the state. This is the only public hearing that they scheduled in Northern California, uh, and they scheduled as far away as they could from Santa Cruz. I'd like to also offer that um, there's a, a, a PG&E tech that works in our area, and he told me on the side that PG&E employees have always had the opt-out, and most PG&E employees have analog. And those are the ones on the other side of the phone telling you that it's safe. So you need to know that. The second thing he told me that's very important to understand is, I said, who, wh what companies or businesses don't have smart meters pushed on them? They are not allowed to put smart meters in hospitals or fire departments. But schools, but think yes. about that. What she's heard from a meter reader is that the majority of PG&E employees are offered as part of their uh, employee benefits a free analog meter opt-out and that most of those employees have taken advantage, advantage of that opt-out. And keep in mind that these are people who uh, work in the call centers, who hear uh, day after day people calling up with the same symptoms, saying I have ringing in the ears, I have headaches, I have nausea, my dog has cancer, whatever it is. And they're instructed from a, from a script to say, no, that's impossible, they're absolutely safe, they're le much less than a cell phone, blah, 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 all these lies. But at some point, clearly that they're internalizing all the stuff that they're hearing and that uh, they're, uh, they're choosing to opt out and not expose themselves, even as they're going to work and telling people that uh, these, these things are safe. There's a reason why the reinsurance companies like Swiss Re will no longer insure the uh, cell phone companies uh, from future health impacts because they know that according to the science that we have right now, uh, if, if things carry on as they are, we're gonna have a major epidemic of brain tumors from cell phones uh, you know, in, the next, in the next couple of decades. And they don't, uh, from a fiscal perspective, they don't want to uh, be on the hook for that. So if you want to know, if you want to know what the truth is, look at the reinsurance companies because they're the ones on the hook when the insurance companies have to pay out. And we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, cell phones and future brain tumors. We're talking about climate change and and the the, the future liability of polluters. So it's it's, a, it's an important thing to look at. The other thing that Joanne said is that uh, according to her source at PG&E, uh, hospitals and fire stations are not among the those places where smart meters are being deployed for public safety reasons. When you're talking about uh, this, the threat to safety, you know, 
Over the last couple years, we've heard about dozens of smart meter fires in California and hundreds more uh, in, in around the states and around the world. Um, and we, you know, we have direct evidence that these smart meters are causing fires. So for the CPUC to not investigate this, despite the fact that there have been uh, hundreds of these events, uh, and to say, well, you have to pay for this to not have this on your house, is is absolutely incredible, and they need to be called out out for that. Um, you know, the health issue, uh, though, though most of us on this bus are fully convinced and know firsthand, many of us, that this is a hazard, it's still under some, de uh, some debate amongst the, the, the mainstream population. But the fact that a fire can burn you and kill you and, and burn down your home is not under debate. So uh, from that fact alone, we should be demanding uh, uh, a no-cost opt-out. Um, and, and more, and, and you know, compensation for all the damage. The American Association of Pediatrics yes, is that yes, who recently yes. came out against smart meters. Yes. Yeah, and there's and there was recently um, also 54 uh, uh, scientists and medical medical professionals who came out and signed a statement um, together. And this was organized by a Quebecois magazine, the the Maison de la. Uh, 21 siècle, um, and this is linked from our website. All these articles are either on the right-hand side at the top, linked, or under the science tab. Um, but we're seeing a load more scientists come out and be vocal about this. Um, Oh, it's important to speak your truth. You know, if the smart meters have affected you, if they've cost you money, if they've if they've damaged your health, if they've burned your house, you need to tell the truth and what, what's happened, and that that impacts uh, the legality and and the appropriateness of this opt-out fee. Um, don't stop talking when the judge asks you to. Um, you have a right to speak, and this is you know you've gone you've gotten on a bus, you're spending your whole day coming up here. Um, they've purposely made it difficult to, 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 for people to, to access these meetings. You have a right to speak. And so uh, when she says, oh, your two minutes is up, just continue speaking for another 45 seconds a minute. And if we all do that, we're all going to get three minutes. Um, and so we'll get more time to speak and we'll, we'll fill up the whole, the whole time um, of two hours. So make sure that, she, you, know, that, that, that you say what you want to say and that you're not cut off. Um, you can be very respectful about it, but you need to be insistent and defend your rights. Don't let the, the, the judge or any other, uh, you know, representative of the state take away your power to say what you want here today. So a lot of you have uh, have been going to public utilities commissions, like regular business meetings and speaking out. You know, there were a series of meetings uh, uh, last year where there were 60, 70 people um, attending and all speaking about the health issues. And it was pretty uh, impossible to ignore and dismiss that kind of um, testimony. Uh, but this judge, the ALJ, uh, administrative law judge, uh, Amy Yip Kikugawa, has not been sitting in on these regular business meetings and has not heard the drumbeat of health effects. So I think it is important that you know you speak out, out about how it's affected you, how, how it's affected your family, your neighborhood. Mary Beth reminds me that uh, in phase one of this proceeding, this is phase two, but in phase one of this proceeding, there were several meetings at the Public Utilities Commission where these uh, utility executives were sitting in front and were taking questions from the audience uh, on a wireless mic. Uh, and so if, if there is a wireless mic today, I think we should like, you know, bury it under a couple of feet of uh, aluminum shielding. But, uh, you know, I asked uh, the Silver Spring Networks, which is the company based in Redwood City, which manufactures all the telecommunications, all the antennas for all these smart meters. We asked them a very simple question, which is, what is the peak radiation pulse from your device? And it was as if someone had threatened to put a bomb off or something in the uh, in, in the hearing room. They uh, the, the the judge uh, almost cleared the room, wow. almost put an end to the hearing. And you know, I, I, I just I, I said it in a very normal voice. Uh, I didn't I didn't stand up and scream and tear my clothes off and run. I mean, we, you know, I was just asking a simple for a simple answer and. Uh, it, 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 it turned out that they were very uncomfortable in giving that answer. But what happened as a result of myself and other people pushing that question, which we still did not know, even though these devices were being put on everyone's home, we did get an answer. And that answer was provided by pg e in writing. And, it, and it's because, the judge because the judge forced pg e to, uh, to give us the answer. And the answer is that there were 190,000 pulses a day, up to 190,000 pulses of microwave radiation coming from these meters every day, and we have it in writing now. 
Um, they said one meter. In one meter. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And if you think about a bank of a hundred meters on someone's uh, someone's apartment yeah. complex, yeah. we're talking about millions and millions yeah. of pulses. It's very important. One of the other questions that the commission has uh, before it in deciding this proceeding is will it allow communities like a city or a county or even just an apartment complex, however you define communities, should they allow communities to opt out? They already yeah. have. And currently they're not allowing that. Um, yeah. But it's important, it's important that we demand yeah. uh, and that we uh, emphasize that communities do have a right to determine whether they want this technology in their uh, in their areas or not. Now, uh, there are two communities left in the state uh, in, in, in investor-owned utility areas that do not have smart meters for the most part. One of them is Fairfax uh, in Marin County, and that's because the elected officials there had the guts to pass a law saying that this is prohibited, but they also had the guts, more specifically, uh, to stand up and threaten enforcement of their law, to say that Wellington, will, if they come in and they install the smart meters, they are going to have to pay a large fine. And uh, the reason why uh, other uh, local communities who have passed ordinances are, are, have not been successful and pg has just run into them is that they've backed down and not been willing to enforce the law. Or they've been paid. The other community is Point Reyes Station in West Marin, and um, about a year ago, no, two years ago now, uh, uh, a large group of uh, residents of Point Reyes Station got together and blocked Sir Francis Drake when a phalanx of about 10 Wellington installation trucks came in. And they sat in the street and they said, we're not going to move. And two, two mothers got arrested, uh, Katarina and June, and they were arrested and taken to the county jail. And uh, because of that action, that one day, two years ago, PG&E is terrified of coming back in and installing these meters because they know if they did, they're gonna create a scene and they're gonna create more drama and more media coverage and that's the last thing they want. They wanna keep this quiet, they want people to obey, and they wanna sweep you all under the rug and, 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 and take their, their gold, they suck their gold from you. So a community opt-out and the rights of communities to opt-out of this toxic program is absolutely essential uh, in this proceeding. It is within, within the scope of this proceeding. So um, the cost issue, the community opt-out issue, uh, are all really critical uh, things to bring up and to, and to emphasize. So there's no question that, that it violates these codes and these laws. The question is, do we have enough money and, and do we have a lawyer to take him to court and to sue him and to get this uh, reversed? So the, the administrative law judge could decide, okay, based on the testimony I've received, we're deciding that, that uh, you know, we're gonna have no cost opt-out. It's gonna be an analog. Communities are gonna be allowed to have the choice to opt-out, maybe even business uh, and, and we're going to reverse this but again it's not just the judge she can make a recommendation but it has to be approved by the commission the commission is run by president PV appointed by the governor we still you know they're 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 loaded with people who are not on our side another tech told me that PG&E employees work for CPUC including PG&E lawyers it's called a revolving door yes. people who are working for the Public Utilities Commission used to work for PG&E and vice versa they're part of the same culture they golf on the weekends. They laugh about those crazy tinfoil hat weirdos renting buses to take people up from Santa Cruz. I mean, you know, this is the culture. And so, so CPUC that used to protect our rights, but we're there for the public. Yeah. It's just a sham as the FDA is not protecting our rights in food and in safe drugs. Same thing. Yeah. So we want our rights protected. We cannot wait for someone, whether it's Stop Smart Meters or whether it's the PUC or whether it's Barack Obama or whether it's Bill Monning or whoever to stand up for our rights. We've got to do it ourselves. Yes. And, 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 the, and the, we, we learn that lesson the hard way when we, uh, when we give up our own power and our responsibility. Um, when we have ha made, uh, when we have had success and we have made strides, it's always when people uh, stop listening to authority and do what needs to be done. I wrote out the five questions that the um, judge will actually be deciding, so that oh, what you could do is, is work Thank your you. um, you. things, all that stuff, into those little paragraphs, Thank and you. it'll make it easier for her to hear your words in connection with what she has to decide. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Josh?
Josh, yeah. I think it's very important also to think about this judge. She may not have a very um, well-educated background in the biological sciences because when we start talking about health issues, I don't think most people in the general public understand the basic cell biology. Your cell needs a certain environment to stay in homeostasis. If your cells in your body and your companion animals and your barn animals, their cells are not in a certain environment, they will go awry. And it, we know it is interfering with DNA. Um, we know it is interfering with melatonin. People aren't sleeping. We know it is interfering with serotonin, so there's a lot of depression. I think we need to somehow educate the judge in the very beginning on a little bit of cellular biology. So when people are saying broad claims, to her it will sound like that. Think about what she listens to every day, like legality stuff. I can't sleep, or I'm passing out, or my mother-in-law has nosebleeds, and my kid is crying all the time. We need to start with some biology. Well, that doesn't mean anything to her. I mean, you have to explain what the human body, animal body needs. What happened was uh, that the judge and uh, President Peavy asked Sandy Maurer of the EMF Safety Network where she where uh, she wanted to have the meetings to go away to, to, to pull the community see where the, the most convenient place for the meetings would be held and we came back to uh, the CPUC with a list that included Santa Cruz uh, I think there was one in San Francisco um, and it was not scheduled during the holidays and they basically completely rejected that list uh, and, and decided to schedule it in the middle of the holiday season using none of the places that we'd, we'd suggested. Wow. Should we tell the judge that? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm sure other people will too, but it is, I mean, you know, there is a, there's a loss of decency and a loss of, there's a loss of decency and there's a loss of like a trust that we obviously the CPUC blew a long time ago. But um, when they behave like this, you know, asking us to come up with the suggested uh, locations and then and then doing just the opposite, I mean, it's really like childish, you know, and it's really not uh, yeah, wait, respectable. Josh, you if you if you want to uh, suppress public turnout, you're gonna have to try a little harder. How about midnight on December 24th? Yeah, really. Countries like France and Germany, I have read over and over again, have rejected smart meters with the microwave radiation as we know it. And I think it's important to sort of let the public know that we uh, we are really behind on our on the health issues with the smart meters, the invasion, the security and all of that. I want to just make one quick uh, point. There's a, a ruling in the at this in the CPUC regulations um, that about causation of a co um, you yeah. know a cost allocation we have not caused this this expense remind remind her over and over again about that because that's legally in their rules and so therefore why should we be uh, charged for it okay, go get him we are. International Day of Action. October 4th, yeah. We did that. <laughs> These are complaints, health complaints. Hundreds of smart meter illness that were submitted to the county public health officer of Santa Cruz County and I think the state public health department as well and I'm going to um, show them anyway to this judge today. Nice. These people can't all be making these up. These are microwave radiation poisoning symptoms clearly from the literature. Okay, I'm going to load this up if I can.
My name is Eric Windheim. I'm with Sacramento Smart Meter Awareness, and we're here to speak about the deception that's occurring right now of the all the utilities saying these are non-communicating meters. That's baloney. They do communicate the same exact information, but they want to avoid the word transmitting because they have a very dirty switching mode power supply that they don't want to talk about, and that's what's making people sick. And they know it, and they're concealing it, and uh, this needs to come out. So we drove all the way from Sacramento to tell these people here today. What is a switching mode power supply? It's lightweight, it's cheap, it's inexpensive, and it's a replacement for the transformer that we all knew about 30 years ago, but it's very dirty because unless it's grounded, shielded, and filtered, it puts a lot of electrical fast transients and high frequency voltage transients onto your lines, through the air, they can stop your heart, raise your blood sugar, and a lot of other dangerous things to your physiology.